Hi, I'm Quinn Wilkes, Central Sales Manager here at Travis Industries. I want to take time now to introduce you to your new Lopi AGP pellet stove. We've spent over 20 years building pellet stoves here at Travis Industries, and this stove has our latest engineering and technical features in it. We'll take time now to explain it to you so you have many happy years of home ownership. The first thing I want to show you is the hopper on your new AGP pellet stove. With the hopper lid open, there's an 80 pound hopper down here for you to put your pellets in. Now at the back of the hopper is a switch. When the lid is closed, that switch allows the feed mechanism to move the fuel from the hopper to the fire box. If the lid is open, it stops that mechanism. Now, you got to keep that in mind because if you leave the hopper lid open for any reason or if you overfill the hopper, then the hopper lid won't close and your stove will not operate. The fuel that we're burning today is quarter inch high quality wood grade pellets. Now the reason your stove is called an AGP is all grades of pellets. We've designed this system to where it will burn any grade of quarter inch or 5 16 diameter fuel. Now, the way the feed system is designed, it'll even burn the sawdust and the fines that are left over in the bottom of a bag of pellets. Now, we're going to go into the feed system and exactly how that works in a little bit here. Under the hopper lid, you've got various labels, one of which is a caution label. With any heating appliance, it's important to know that there are hot surfaces. Small children must be made aware of this in your home. Now, here are the safety notice labels, maintenance, daily maintenance labels, and then critical maintenance parts of the stove. There's more information about this in the manual, as well as information on the diagnostic codes for troubleshooting. On the rear of the stove, you have a control panel. It's hidden behind an access door. When I drop that down, you'll see the five buttons that control the operation of the stove. The first one I want to talk about is the start button. When you walk up to the cold stove, you push the start button, and it'll take about 20 minutes for the stove to get up to full fire. It's all automatic. All you have to do is push the start button. Next to the start button is a green light. When that light is going through the startup sequence, it's flashing. Once, that, once the startup sequence is complete, then the light will stay solid. You then have the time to control the operation of the stove from high to low on the heat output. That's what the heat knob does. You can adjust the heat from high to low based on how much pellets are being fed into the stove. That'll control how much heat comes out into the home. Next to it is the fan control button, or knob. That knob adjusts the speed of the blower and blowing the heat out into the home. As I turn this up, the fan increases in speed. As I turn it down, it decreases in speed. If you want to, you can just put it in the auto position, and as you adjust the heat output, it will adjust the fan automatically. Below that is the T-STAT button, or thermostat button. You have various thermostat modes that are clearly explained in the owner's manual. When you push that button, that will allow you to have the stove automatically operated to the heat needed in the home based on your thermostat call for heat. In addition to the thermostat, the stove you purchased is a green smart system. And what we mean by that is when the thermostat's not calling for heat, the stove will go into a maintenance burn. You have three different settings that will control the heat output and keep the stove operating, either completely shut it off or will run at a very low speed. There's more information about that in the owner's manual. On the lower left of the control board is a stop button. When you're ready to shut your stove down, you just push that and walk away. It'll take about 40 minutes for it to burn the fuel completely and remove all the smoke and push it out through the vent system and then it shuts itself off completely. As I mentioned before, your AGP pellet stove is designed to burn any quality of fuel. Now one of the ways we accomplish that is that we adjust the amount of air that gets inside the firebox. How we do that is very, with a very simple control rod that's located on the right hand side of the stove. It's your air control rod. When it's pushed in all the way, it allows the full volume of air. When I pull it out, it closes off the amount of air that gets into that burn platform to burn the fuel completely. Now, why that would be important is if you've got this hooked up to a very tall drafting chimney, you may want this in more outward position. As you get into lower quality fuel, uh, you want more air getting into it, you'd have it pushed inward more. So the quality of the fuel and the chimney height is gonna dictate where this air control rod is located. There's more information about this in the manual and you can contact your Lopi dealer. I've removed the burn platform so that you can see the air control and exactly what it does. Above it is the auger and to the left is the igniter. 
But as I move this out, I'm closing off the air control. As I push that rod in, I'm now opening it up to give more air to the fire. Let's take a little time now to talk about maintenance and routine maintenance. We've designed your AGP pellet stove to do most of the maintenance for you, but there are a few things you'll need to do. Now, behind these louvers is a series of heat exchange tubes. Those tubes are where the air blows through and blows the heated air into the house. The fly ash that's inside of the stove will eventually build up on those tubes and you need to clean them. We don't want you to go up inside of them and reach up there and clean them yourself. There's a clean out plate that's accessible behind these louvers for cleaning those tubes. Now the tool that you'll use to work that plate is found on the back of the stove. I'll take the tip of that tool and slide it into this rod, slide it back to forth, and that is now cleaning the plate off or cleaning the tubes off so all the fly ash is removed off the tubes, giving you more heat out into the home. At the base of the stove is an access door. You drop the handle down and here you'll find your ash pan. It's a large ash pan with a lifting handle. Now above the ash pan is a slider plate handle. And what this does is it actually opens up the bottom of the burn platform so the fly ash can drop down into the ash pan. When you close that, that's for standard operation. If it's left open, air will not move through the burn platform completely and the fuel will not burn completely. So make sure at any time you're in operation, this handle is pushed in completely. Now let's look inside the pellet stove. Here you've got a burn platform that burns the fuel up. The deflector in front of it serves the purpose of putting back pressure on it to completely burn the fuel. It hangs on the two points on either side. Now occasionally you're going to burn low grade pellets that are going to build up a clinker inside this platform. To remove that clinker, sometimes the pellets will push it out down into the ash pan. But if you need to assist it, the tool that we showed you earlier also works as a scraper to remove the clinker from the burn platform. Depending on the fuel that you're burning, you may have a buildup in the actual holes of the burn platform itself. This tool is also designed to remove that buildup from the burn platform. If you need to take it completely out of the stove, there's a slide lever at the bottom that you slide up to line up with a key opening and the burn platform is easily removed. As we move away from daily or weekly maintenance, we look at monthly or annual maintenance. To make this easier, we provide two brushes for you. There's a standard brush and a bottle brush. Now to use these brushes, we want to remove the stainless steel baffle plates, the burn platform, and the visual deflector. Start with the visual deflector, remove it, line up the key on the burn platform, and remove the burn platform. Then we'll start with the baffle plates. The stainless steel baffle plates, just remove the top one first. With the plates removed, we can then use the brushes provided to clean the entire inside of the stove. You'd first start with a standard brush. You'd uh, wipe across the back wall here, across the sides, and all the fly ash will drop down into the ash pan. You'd also use this brush to wipe across the back here and the systems disc behind the access plate. This bottle brush, you could get inside the narrow passageways, it's bendable, and you can get inside of here and draw, wipe all the fly ash down inside here to drop down into the lower passage. Once you've cleaned the upper portion of the stove, all the ash will drop to the bottom. To remove that ash, drop down the ash pan door, remove the ash pan. Most of the ash will end up there. Now behind the ash pan is an access door that gets you into the lower part of the stove and the combustion fan system. Everything, as I said before, is clean from the front of the stove. So you can clean all of this, clean the combustion fan blades with the brushes provided, and then vacuum the remaining ash out of the system for complete cleaning. Now, once a year, you'll want to remove this plate. This plate access accesses the flue system, and you can vacuum all the way down to the back of the stove. We've designed your AGP pellet stove with an amazing air wash system. And the way it works is that air gets pulled in past the combustion chamber 
and it gets pulled across these openings here, top and bottom, and it keeps the fly ash from building up on the window itself. Uh, occasionally, you may see a little bit of a fine haze built up on there. We just want you to wipe that clean with a clean rag. Um, when you do that, you want to make sure that it's cold. You don't want the fire burning in there, obviously. Now, the gasket itself on the door, it can become compressed over time. The door is designed to where you can adjust it, and there's washers on the back side of the cam here, and then there's a nut. You remove the nut and the cam, pull off a couple of those washers, tighten the nut and the cam back up, and it'll give you a good tight seal. If you're starting to leak air past it, you'll see streaks on the glass itself. Now, if the gasket needs to be replaced, I'd contact your Lopi dealer and see about having the gasket replaced on your door. What you're looking at is the heart of the pellet stove. The horizontal disc at the base of the hopper captures the fuel and as the opening comes around it drops the pellets to a holding area. That holding area then keeps the fuel that is going down to the auger separate from the hopper. As the fuel drops down onto the auger, the auger moves that fuel to the burn platform. By doing this, there's never a point where the fuel or what is being combusted inside the stove can ever reach back to get to the hopper. Your HEP pellet stove is supplied with a three-prong grounded plug. Now, this may seem obvious, but this needs to be plugged into a three-prong grounded outlet in your home. If that is, doesn't happen, if your outlet isn't wired properly, then the printed circuit control board that operates your stove will not operate the stove well long term. So make sure your installer, your service person, checks your plug and make sure that it's plugged into a three-prong grounded outlet. On the back of the stove is a three-inch exhaust point for hooking up your flue system. You would then run that flue outside the house and all the exhaust would leave out through that three-inch exhaust. Next to it is a smaller air entry point. That's for your combustion air. Now, the stove works off a principle of negative pressure where the combustion fan is pulling air through it. And if you want this stove to really be efficient, you would hook this up to an outside air source. Now, we provide one. Uh, the part number is found in the manual or you can contact your Lopa dealer. And you'd hook that outside air source to the outside world. It would pull combustion air in. That combustion air would then go through the stove, past the burn platform, past the heat exchanger, and then down and out the three inch exhaust. By doing this, it's a closed loop system. The combustion on this system or the combustion efficiency for this pellet stove is tested at over 99%. So you're burning up virtually all of the fuel that is put into the burn platform that by hooking up outside combustion air, it's just gonna make it a much more efficient heating system. Your new Lopi AGP pellet stove can be ordered two ways, either with the black painted panels or with the upgrade on the patina panels. The patina finish is a special metal finishing we do here at Travis Industries by some true artisans. They give it that age rustic look. Uh, if you do decide to go with a black painted panel, talk to your Lopi dealer about custom painting it to match the decor in your home. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. For more information about your new Lopi stove, visit the website at lopistoves.com. You can also register your stove there. And if you have additional questions, you can contact your local Lopi dealer.